welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa, and today I have a great foodie video for you guys today because I'm going to be making a special summertime pasta dish that I love eating around this time of year, and that is what I like to call caprese pasta. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with the classic caprese salad dish in Italy that is served with fresh mozzarella cheese, beautiful tomatoes, and lovely basil. Usually you can pour olive oil over it, maybe even some balsamic if you like that, salt and pepper, and you have a delicious, fresh summertime dish. It is one of my most favorite salads, I guess you can say, to eat, but I also love to make it as a pasta dish. So this dish is going to be a warm dish using your favorite ingredients from that caprese salad, but turned into a hot pasta dish. Now you can of course use any type of pasta that you'd like and all you need are a couple simple ingredients and you're that much closer to making this delicious, simple, easy pasta dish perfect for the spring or summertime when these ingredients are very fresh and seasonal. I'm going to try to make a serving that is perfect for about two to even three people, probably two for maybe room for some more but I won't be using this entire pack of pasta, so I'll be using a little bit more than half. I have a lot of basil here. Of course, everything is to your taste, so if you don't want that much basil, you can of course put less. If you want more, put more, it's all up to you. All you'll need is a couple little sprigs of basil. I would say I might have even 20 or so leaves. I have a clove of garlic. If you love garlic, you could put more. If you don't like garlic, you can completely omit this step. I like the taste of garlic, so I'm just going to be adding one clove. I'll show you in a second. Of course, we need tomatoes. Now, I like to use cherry or grape tomatoes for this dish. I have some beautiful Roma grape tomatoes. Some are bigger, some are smaller. These were organic, so they are going to be very delicious. And I have about 24 tomatoes in here, about a cup and a half or 280 grams of tomatoes. This should be good enough. You can use a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on your taste. I find this amount to be very good. And of course, we have 200 grams or about nine of these Bocconcini balls. You can, of course, use a large serving of a round mozzarella ball, but I like these little Bocconcini, and I'm probably going to be quartering them or maybe even just cutting these in half. I will be cutting the tomatoes in half as well. Bocconcini is basically a little version of mozzarella cheese. It's always fresh mozzarella, so that is very important. And of course, about half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. In the pan, we are going to be using a quarter of a cup of olive oil, and then the last quarter of a cup we can use for after. So you can drizzle anywhere from one to four tablespoons of oil into your pasta dish. You can use a little more or a little less depending on your taste. And of course, salt and pepper, very simple. You could even flavor this with those um, chili flakes or pepperoncini, it's up to you. I just prefer pepper. So with that being said, let's get started and let's prepare this dish. I already have a big pot of water. It's already salted, so that's just on the stove, on high. That should take about 10 minutes to reach full boil. And in the meantime, as that's going, let's prepare the ingredients. Okay, so first things first, let's get this garlic chopped up. We're just going to slice this garlic. I always like to just chop off the end of the garlic. I don't know why, it's just something I do. And then instead of cutting it into minced little pieces, I'm basically just going to quarter it and leave it in chunks that I will be fishing out later. I just want the garlic in there for flavor. So I'm adding this to my pan right now. And then all of these tomatoes. So these beautiful grape tomatoes. Like I said, there are about two dozen tomatoes here. I'm just going to be cutting these in half and throwing them in my pan. I know that there's probably a quicker way of doing this, but I like to just do it one by one. Just makes me feel better. <laughs> so just slicing these in half and throwing these right in the pan. I find that sometimes the tomato seeds can be a bit sour. So if you'd like for the bigger tomatoes, you can sort of just squeeze out some of the seeds so you don't need all the seeds in there. This is a little bit of an extra step, but I feel like you don't need all of these seeds. So if you do have the larger tomatoes and you do find them to be a bit more on the sour side, you can just lightly squeeze these out. Okay, so now that the tomatoes are taken care of, the garlic is in there, what we need is the olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil, of course, makes this for a tasty dish, so you don't want to skip this step. I have about half a cup in here, and what I would like to do is add half of this right in the pan, 
I just want to keep a little bit reserved for a later. When my pasta is finished, I like to toss in some fresh olive oil to just reinforce that delicious flavor. So for now, it is going to be a quarter of a cup of olive oil right in the pan. So in this pan, we have the tomatoes, the garlic, and the olive oil. I'm just going to be adding a little bit of salt and a touch of pepper for now. You can of course always add more salt, but you can't take it away. So I like to start off with a bit and then after I taste it, I'll add a little bit more. Of course, the pasta is quite bland. I already have the salted water, but even so, pasta loves salt. So we're probably going to be resalting in a bit. So right now, I'm just going to be putting this over my stovetop on a medium heat and I'm going to be letting this go, occasionally giving this a stir. You can even lower it if you find that they're blistering a little bit too quickly. So while those tomatoes are bubbling away and they're getting nice and blistered and they're cooking, I'm just going to start by tearing the basil and placing each leaf on top of each other. If you have a pretty leaf that you want to save for the end, we're just going to set that aside. You can even just tear the basil right into your pasta for later, but I'm just going to show you a cute technique. It's a chef and nod technique. So what you're going to be doing is taking the basil, putting it on top of each other and almost rolling it like a cigar. So now that you have a nice bunch of basil, we're just going to take our knife and lightly cut into this basil. And what that creates are these nice ribbons of basil. The stem of the basil we don't need, so we can just discard these. And like I said, save some leaves for putting on top as a final pretty decoration. I think that looks cute. So these nice ribbons of basil are on the side and we're just going to be cutting our mozzarella. This of course is these little bocconcini balls. So we're just going to be quartering this mozzarella cheese. They're going to be melting into the pasta so you won't even really notice the difference if you're not so precise with your cutting. Okay, so now that our ingredients are nice and chopped and ready to go, I just checked on the tomatoes and they're coming along very nicely. I put them on a low heat. So they went from medium to a now low heat. They're basically almost ready to go. I just threw the pasta in. This fusilli pasta says it takes about 11 to 13 minutes. I'm gonna go with 11 because I like al dente. At the 10 minute mark, I'm probably going to check on it and see if it needs another minute or so. I'm going to be also doing at the 10 minute mark is just I'm going to be reserving maybe a cup or so of that pasta water. You can also add that to the sauce to make it a little bit more saucy if it's on the dry side. But for now, we're looking pretty good. And I removed those chunks of garlic. Okay, so I would say there's about a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil in this pan. Let's see how much more we need when we dump this cooked fusilli pasta. So right into the pan. Now I've already salted the tomatoes and the pasta water, but chances are we are going to be needing to add a little bit more salt after. But you can see that these tomatoes have completely burst releasing all the best flavor. They look so delicious. So before we do anything, we're just going to be mixing this pasta into this nice oily tomato sauce. I'm just gonna be adding a touch more oil at this point, maybe like two tablespoons or so. I just tasted one of the pasta, so I'm just gonna be adding a little bit more salt. I would say maybe about a teaspoon or so, and a touch more pepper. Now, while the pasta is still warm, I'm going to be adding all of this mozzarella cheese. This is the most exciting part. So throw that right into your pasta. I might save just a couple chunks for plating, but throw basically the entire thing in. We're going to be adding a touch of this pasta water, maybe a tablespoon or so. The starches from the pasta water will help to actually thicken the sauce. It won't make it watery, so it's going to make it nice and creamy. Okay, so the hot pasta and that hot oil and sauce has cooked the mozzarella. It is completely getting nice and melty and gooey. At this stage, I like to add the basil. So I'm just going to be sprinkling this fresh basil that we chopped nicely right over. And guys, the exact recipe will be on my website, ladolcelisa.com. So check that out for the exact measurements of things. I tend to do things by eye, so cooking with a recipe is a little bit difficult for me, but I feel like this made the perfect amount. We are going to be plating this. What I like to do is sprinkle on this fresh parmigiano cheese right on top. You can, of course, sprinkle it on individual plates, but I feel like parmigiano just gives it that nice, delicious flavor. So use as much or as little as you like. Remember those sprigs of basil? I'm just gonna add a couple fresh sprigs. 
And just right on top, I saved a couple of those extra Bocon Genie balls, so I'm just gonna throw those in there to further reinforce that delicious flavor. Now since no one's here right now to enjoy this with me, I guess I get to eat this whole plate of pasta. My photographer's gonna taste it as well, she's been helping me film, so thanks Jules. But yes, I'm just gonna be tasting it right out of the bowl. Of course, if you're serving this, plate it nicely, you can sprinkle some added parmigiano on top, it's all up to you. So let's get a good bite here. Some of this gooey cheese and some pieces of tomato, of course. I want a little bit of everything in my bite. Look at that melty and gooey cheese. Oh my gosh, this is so good. If you're making this for a cheese lover, they'll probably kiss you after. So let's have a bite of this delicious caprese pasta. Mmm. Wow. I love using these fusilis or these little corkscrews because they scoop up that nice oily sauce that we have. Mmm. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today and making this delicious caprese pasta. You can use any pasta you like, but of course I use fusilli. For the exact recipe, head on over to my blog post, ladolcelisa.com. I will be giving you the exact ingredients written there very clearly, as well as written directions as well. But I just want to say bye for now and thank you so much for joining me. I really do hope that you make this pasta dish and give it a go because it is so easy to make. You can whip it up in literally minutes. It takes hardly any cooking time and it comes together and it is the perfect summertime dish. It's reminiscent of all the classic Italian flavors that we love. So I hope you guys really give this dish a try and let me know by leaving me a comment down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye for now. Mm. <laughs> Now since this basically is all for me, <laughs> 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 blooper! Oh my god. Okay.